We need to help your son hit better. We need to help your daughter hit better. Our kids want to hit better, but we need to do a better job in guiding them to that path. In the same manner that one objectively assesses a business, when you have to critically evaluate the workers and the structure of how a system is operating, and then to carefully outline the goals and purposes that you're trying to achieve. We do this all the time, every day with our businesses. Why don't we do this with our kids hitting? with our teams hitting. So let me give you an example. Let's start right here. What is a simplified goal for our hitters? How about this? They hit more airplanes in real games. You're asking, Dave, can you please clarify the term airplane? It's hitting the ball on the sweet spot of the bat that has a launch angle between 10 to 30 degrees. The objective is to teach our players how to hit more airplanes without them actually trying to hit airplanes. Our players can hit more airplanes because they know how to increase the level of hitting perception. Well, now you're asking me, Dave, can you clarify the term hitting perception? Certainly. If we open the folder that reads hitting perception, you're going to see a simple definition for the word perception that means one's ability to use their senses to interpret and explain the world around them. Using your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears, and your sense for feel and the sense for space that's around you. We use our senses to make computations for data about the moving ball. What is the ball's speed? What is the ball's space that the ball is moving into? Acknowledge and recognize the depth of the ball is passing through. Now, I hope that clarifies the term hitting perception. We need to help our kids operate in a manner where they have higher levels of hitting perception. Now, how do we do this? It begins with understanding individually every hitter's natural athletic disposition, their natural athletic DNA. If we are going to teach our kids how to have higher levels of hitting perception, we cannot teach a one-size-fits-all hitting program. We have to acknowledge every hitter's natural athletic disposition. This begins with accurately testing and assessing every hitter's natural hitting tempo. In my research, I have only identified two hitting tempos. Hitting tempo has a direct effect to hitting perception. The hitting tempo that you're using with a player has to be on point. If it's not, the hitter is going to struggle with everything else down the line. Hitting tempo is like finding an automobile, a car that best fits your lifestyle, fits your personality. It's like finding a wardrobe that's going to complement your complexion. After we accurately assess the hitter's tempo, we need to identify what is the best hitting model, the best hitting style that the hitter is going to operate from. In my research of major league hitters, I have come up with 13 different hitting styles, 13 different hitting models. Which style, which model best complements our kids' natural athletic hitting disposition? This is not a one-size-fits-all program. The next concept or the next element we need to help our kids to understand more thoroughly is once I pull in information about the ball, what am I trying to do with that information? If you do your research and watch the hitters carefully, you'll see two often that what is promoted in our hitting culture is to teach players to hit the ball as hard as they can, to be violent to the ball. The concept of hitting the ball as hard as you can, if you do your research, is not practiced by elite hitters. Elite hitters who have higher levels of hitting perception operate on a different platform. They operate on a different station. From the viewpoint of a neuroscientist, elite hitters are thinking faster than the ball is actually moving. If you study Study this very intimately and watch the hitter's eyes to understand what's going on in the brain. The moment they're processing the information, you will see that elite hitters are not trying to smash the ball. Instead, they're replacing that concept with trying to out see the ball. Elite hitters outsee the ball on two perspectives. They outsee the ball on both ends. They outsee it to the finish line and more importantly they outsee it to the starting line. And it's right here at this concept, at this element, that our kids are failing. It's in this area they need our help. They are failing because we as a community fail in regards to properly train our kids to think faster than the ball is moving on both ends of the 
of the spectrum at the finish line and especially at the starting line. We need to do a better job in teaching our kids these concepts and daily training our kids inside the realms of these concepts. Look, let me give an example. After we nail down what is the player's correct hitting tempo and then we determine which one of the 13 hitting models best fits our player, we're on the right path. But how do we accurately evaluate hitting tempo and hitting model? Let me tell you one way that we shouldn't do it. We shouldn't test the hitting tempo and we shouldn't test the hitting model in a hitting environment that is fake, that is not like the game. We cannot accurately assess what's the best hitting tempo, the best hitting model, when you have a pitcher that's standing 25 feet away from the batter, 30 feet away from the batter, and just pitching fake style batting practice using a visual pattern that is unlike the visual pattern a hitter will experience in a live game. And neither can we make an accurate assessment while using a pitching machine. That doesn't work either. Finding the right hitting tempo and the right hitting model needs to be assessed and tested while you have a pitcher pitching batting practice to our players. If our kids are playing the piano, would you hand them a little Casio toy piano and say, here, go practice. And then they have a performance and then when they have to go play on a real piano, Piano, you know what? The spacing of the keys is going to be distorted to them. The pitching coach doesn't tell the pitcher, hey, this is how we're going to get ready for the game this week. I want you to pitch on the flat ground every single day. Even before the game, just pitch on the flat ground. You're not going to practice pitching on a pitching mound until you enter the game. We all know that wouldn't go well either. Then why would we expect our kids to hit better in games when they don't see a game visual environment until it's the actual game? Scientifically, this is called the said principle, specific adaptations to imposed demands. There are three basic visual patterns our players need in batting practice. Number one, they need to see a pitcher pitching from a full windup. Number two, they need to see a pitcher pitching from the stretch with a leg pump. Number three, they need to see a pitcher pitching from the stretch with a slide step. Test it for yourself because I definitely have. Some players do great with a pitcher in a full windup and some players really struggle when a pitcher's in a slide step when runners are on base. So here's the good news. We need to work together. Our kids, our players, they want this. I'm Dave Kirilov with the languageofhitting.com and the Kirilov Baseball School in Anna, Texas. We need to teach our players, we need to teach our coaches, we need to teach our parents more about hitting perception. Join our community and sign up for our online hitting courses. Talk amongst your parents, talk amongst your coaches, and consider having us come out directly to work with your player or your team face-to-face -face in your hometown. Or consider visiting us in Anna, Texas at our home facility. We need to do this. We need to help our kids. They want to get better. Let's not let them down.